So welcome to this week's presentation, uh, the mini webinar for the Texas Engineering and Technology Network. Uh, this is the fourth in our series of business development and growth webinars. Today we're covering the topic of the predictable growth engine. So I'll share the screen and then we can have a look at that presentation. which is hiding from, there we go. So this week's presentation is called Installing the Predictable Growth Engine to Double Your Sales in 12 to 24 Months. You've seen this uh, example before. This is the typical life cycle of a small business. And uh, one of the areas that we're concerned about, we're trying to help people with, is to get out of the flat line period and uh, avoid that limitation to the business and definitely avoid going into the death spiral. And we want to actually help you break out and then go for the high value exit. So within this life cycle, there are actually three places where the predictable growth engine becomes uh, an important part of your process. The first one is after traction, is to implement the predictable growth engine to get you to that momentum phase. So you can start growing the business, you're bringing repeatable sales in, and you can plan for your future. The second time we'd want to look at either implementing or reinvigorating the predictable growth engine is to get to this breakout. If we flatline the business, one of the things to look at is to re renew and reinvigorate our growth engine so that we can get to that breakout stage. And then the final stage is when we're up at the top of the curve when we're preparing for our high value exit. Again, implementing the predictable growth engine at that time will, uh, will help us optimize the value of the business for the exit. So as I said, that's, it's one of the three main systems that we recommend you install. The other two being the, the seven stages of entrepreneurship and the high profit business exit strategy. Um, and we're actually running through the seven stages of entrepreneurship. So this is a subset of that, but we will be doing a deep dive on the predictable growth engine in a later webinar series. So what is this about the predictable growth engine? It's an eight step process and it is all based on the psychology of human intimacy. And one of the things that we often forget because everybody's thinking digital and online marketing we forget that it's a human being behind the screen that's making the buying decision. And we tend to get enamored with tactics and with selling to the screen, but we forget that it's the human being who ultimately makes the buying decision. And that decision is always an emotional trigger. So this eight-step process is awareness, engagement, subscription, which is lead generation. Conversion and excitement is our sales process. Ascension is uh, client value maximization. And then advocacy and promotion is the marketing aspects. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. In order to have a predictable growth engine, we need to implement three subsystems. We need to, a documented journey, we need actionable metrics, and we need tools and tactics. If we have all these together, we have predictable growth. We can define and manage our growth. And just like any other system, we can increase the, increase the volume at one end to increase the output at the other. If we only have um, two out of the three in place, we end up with a number of problems that we, we analyze in a later date. And we'll talk about more in, in a future presentation. So what are actionable metrics? Well, obviously it's just something that is measurable and, and we would recommend you use lead measures here, um, things that you can influence that will actually move the needle. There's no point going for long range lag measures because that doesn't give you the sensitivity. We recommend at least two, maximum of three lead measures per phase or per, for each of the eight phases or eight, eight stages of your journey. And that way you've got some tests. So if you, if you incorrectly select a, uh, a metric that doesn't, doesn't really support the issue, you're not going to crash and burn. You've got, you know, you've got redundancy in the metrics that you're using. And the goal is initially select a metric, select an actual or a target get your actuals to the target. And when you've turned one section green, 
So let's say, for example, we had all of our metrics for our awareness campaigns in the green. We would then uh, go through the process of turning them yellow. So we would increase the target as part of our optimization to then stretch and improve the quality of our awareness campaigns. And we'll talk about that in a lot more detail. Tools and tactics. This is a schematic or this is a diagram of the eight steps of the of the value journey uh, variously called the customer value journey the client value journey these are the eight steps to the marketing system and we have tools and tactics that we'd recommend in each of these stages to optimize the way you do business and that's part again of the optimization process the documented journey you saw the cvj but before we go into the detail of that, let me ask you the question. Is your marketing B2B or B2C? In the engineering space, the vast majority of us would say that we are B2B marketers. And in fact, we're wrong. All marketing is H to H. And I alluded to this earlier. Um, the buying decision is always an emotional decision. So we must be speaking to the human being on the receiving end of our marketing message. If we don't engage with that human being, our marketing will fail. So I want to introduce you to a gentleman called Desmond Morris. Uh, Desmond Morris was around in the 70s. He was a, uh, an anthropologist and he wrote the global bestseller called The Naked Ape. Uh, some of you may be too young to remember this. This came out when I, was, uh, when I was around. And this became a global bestseller and propelled his career. After this, he then created, he wrote another book called Intimate Behavior. And in this book, he asked the question, how does human intimacy happen? And what he found is there are 12 levels of human intimacy or 12 steps. The lowest step is eye to body. This is seeing a potential mate across the savannah or in modern parlance across the bar or the dance floor. And then the, the level of intimacy increases. So eye to body, eye to eye. You're trying to get that person to return a glance. Voice to voice, you go and speak to the person hand to hand. This could be a handshake or as the relationship matures, holding hands. And then as things progress, arm to shoulder, arm to waist. And then as you get into a more serious relationship, mouth to mouth, that first kiss, uh, hand to head, hand to body, mouth to body, intimate touch, and ultimately consummation of the relationship. Now, one of the big lessons, probably the biggest lesson that Desmond Morris found was that the speed of moving through these 12 stages was no predictor of success. And you've probably heard the stories of people who are uh, flying you know, across the country the plane gets grounded because of bad weather. People end up in a uh, in the bar at the at the airport, and a few hours later, the, the flight agent comes in and says, "Hey, we can't take off tonight. We're going to put you all into hotels." And then people who were complete strangers three or four hours before are now hooking up for the night. So the speed at which you move through the twelve stages is no predictor of success. It can be done very quickly. What is important is the sequence. If you miss more than one step in this process you will fail and this is what the customer value journey does this is the this is the marketing equivalent of that escalation of human intimacy and it's the the idea is it gives us a predictable flow of customers it aligns the business so all the all the elements of the business can talk about the marketing system with a common terminology and it also aligns the interests of the customers to the business so looking at the lead generation step, these are the first three boxes. And this is the bottom row of converting a prospect into a lead. Um, and it's the most expensive part of the journey. Typically, the lead generation can cost as much as 60 times more than the rest of the journey put together. So awareness, the prospect becomes aware of your business. They, they find you in a Google search. They hit a, pay, a PPC ad. Uh, they go to your booth at a trade show. They see an ad in a, in a trade journal. Um, you do outbound email marketing. Whatever it is, the for the first time, the, uh, the prospect, or in this case, the suspect, becomes aware of your business. The next level is engagement. And what we recommend here is you provide them something to get them to want to look at you and spend time with you. So this is, this is what we call ungated content. This is the crux. This is the centerpiece of content marketing. And it's getting them to stay around to look at your uh, site to look at your business so that you can then um, continue to build that relationship. So free ungated content on your website that you allow for uh, for the for the prospect to consume 
is the next step in the process. And then the final element of your lead generation effort is a subscription stage. This is where you would offer some gated content, some very valuable information, um, a downloadable document, a text sheet, a spec sheet, a checklist, some sort of tool or aid memoir, something that's really valuable and helpful to your prospect that they're willing to exchange an email for in return for getting access to that information. And as soon as they give you their email, they become a lead and the cost of your marketing tends to zero because you can email them as often as you want, as long as you're not rude and you don't spam them. But as soon as you get that email, your marketing costs go to zero and now you can build a much more intimate relationship through an email marketing campaign. So these three steps is the lead generation process. Once we come to the next part, which is what we call making the left hand turn, this is the most difficult part. This is converting the lead into a customer. And the thing is, as soon as you as soon as you get that commitment from them, you need to wow them quickly and bring them through to your ascension ladder. So the conversion step, we use what we call an entry point offer. This is a low risk commitment, either of time or money. Years ago, it used to be the seven dollar ebook, and then when you bought the ebook, you had you know a dozen upsells to try and check out and get away from the from the marketer. Um, today, what we're finding is a small commitment of time. The the twenty minute mini webinar or the twenty minute um, YouTube video is a very very good commitment, uh, an expression of commitment, converting your lead into a consumer and someone that you can then sell to your core offer. The excitement is really the script. So whether you're doing a webinar, whether you're doing a, a discovery call, whether you're doing a sales call, this is the script that excites them about the value proposition of your core offer that you can then bring them through to your ascension ladder. And the ascension ladder is where we give the customer so much value and so much opportunity to do business with us, they want to do more and more. And this can be uh, what we call in, in golden nuggets. There's, there's typically a lot of opportunity for increasing the average value of the customer relationship through cross-sells, upsells, bundles, subscription services that most businesses have not considered. So one of the key points in building this customer value journey is to look at the ascension ladder and look at where there are golden nuggets which the business has missed. And then the final step is uh, social proof. And this is where we, we get all the power to help our uh, prospect and lead convert into a client. And the customer value journey is designed to give us both um, advocacy and promotion. And when we complete this, we create what we call the, the marketing flywheel or the predictable growth engine. So advocacy, while the client is still elated because of the product or service that you've delivered them, you ask them for, for a review and a testimonial, and preferably a video testimonial. Video is 14 times more powerful than text. So if you can have videos uh, on your website or as part of your marketing material of happy customers, that is much more powerful than a, a straight textual message. And then the final step is the promote stage. And this is where you're actually asking your happy client to refer you for others. And the, the trick here is, is happy clients actually don't, don't do a particularly good job at referrals. What you need is successful clients who you give an opportunity to talk about themselves and their success, and in doing so, but de facto refer to, the, to the, what you did for them to help them achieve the success. So there's a technique in getting successful clients to become promoters for you. So the great marketing strategy comes down to this planning each step of your client value journey so that your ideal prospect seamlessly becomes a client, an advocate, and finally a promoter of your business. And when you can get your clients to become promoters, you then close the loop on that growth flywheel, on that predictable growth engine, and then you have a machine that you can just ramp up and speed up uh, as much as you want just by the inputs you put into your um, awareness and that lead generation. So this is a generic example of how the, um, how the uh, customer value journey would be put together. And uh, as you see, we would typically start at the ascend stage. So we'd look at the core offer, we'd look at the upsells that are appropriate, the expansion opportunities of the cross sells, and then the retention, which would be a subscription service. We work back from the core offer to the entry point offer, which is part of the conversion stage. And this is where the prospect makes a small purchase or schedules a demo. 
and then we would look at the um, either the, the discovery call or the sales script or whatever you use to excite them on that initial call to get them to take you up on the core offer. Once we've got the once we've got the customer value optimized and we've got your conversion optimized, we then go and look at lead generation, and so we look at what is it that what is the sort of awareness campaign we need to get them to come and find out about you, to visit your website, to start to consuming your information, to give them engaging content that gets them to keep coming back and to start building that relationship with you, so that ultimately you can offer them the gated content which will then cause them to um, escalate from being a suspect to a prospect to a lead and eventually someone who's made a commitment to become a potential client. And then the final two steps when all of this is built out is the, the system for um, harvesting testimonials and reviews and eventually a, a, a formalized system for going to your successful customers and asking them to give you a, a testimonial, uh, sorry, a, a case study that you can then use for referrals. So that's how we build the eight steps of the customer value journey, which is the, the documented journey that forms the basis of the predictable growth engine. As I said, the, the predictable growth engine is one of the key systems that we recommend you implement. It appears three times in the overall program. So we'll be doing a deep dive on that. In fact, we'll be doing a whole webinar series on how to design, implement, and optimize your predictable growth engine. But for today, to give you this uh, second step in the seven phases of the entrepreneur's journey, um, this is the this is the sort of thirty thousand foot view of the predictable growth engine. So that's what we have for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. And um, here is the link to the group on uh, on LinkedIn. So if you haven't already joined the Texas Engineering and Technology Network, if you're eligible, and to be eligible, you must be the owner or senior decision maker of an engineering and technology company based in Texas. But if you are eligible, please visit the group, uh, apply to join, and uh, I'd love to see you in the group and see how we can help you uh, succeed with your business and increase your revenue. That's it for me, I'm Dave Walters, and thank you for, thank you for joining us today.